American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. Today we have Derek Freeman from Bitcoin Philadelphia, Megan Lords from Bitcoin Not Bombs, Will Pengman from Bitcoin Milwaukee, and Anthony DiOrio from the Bitcoin Alliance of Canada. This episode was sponsored by Let's Talk Bitcoin. Let's Talk Bitcoin. Check out their exciting new podcast contest and vote for your favorite. Find out more at letstalkbitcoin.com. Moving on. Issue 1. Gas station accepts Bitcoin. A gas station in Greeley, Colorado is now accepting Bitcoins. As I've said dozens of times on Mad Bitcoins, gas stations and Bitcoins go together like peanut butter and jelly. No chargebacks, less fees, and you can get your money faster. Bitcoin is just better money. How much longer before a major chain like BP or Chevron adopts Bitcoin? I ask you, Derek J. I think that's still more than a year off, honestly. Uh, 2014 will be the year of small retailers accepting Bitcoin, and we're going to see a lot of stories like this one in uh, Greeley, Colorado, where independent business owners say, hey, I can do that, and I can pick up some, some easy business from the local economy. Uh, I can pick up some Bitcoin this way. So small retailers who are agile enough to be able to make these types of changes will be accepting it in 2014, but I don't see major places like Chevron or BP accepting it until it's more mainstream, maybe in 2015. Megan Lords. I was going to say the same thing, actually. I think we're going to see smaller uh, gas stations accepting it first, and we're still kind of a far way off from someone like BP, BP sorry, or Chevron accepting Bitcoin. I mean, unless unless they decide that it's going to be extremely profitable for them to do it, I, I just see you know smaller retailers accepting it first. Will Pengman. Yeah, I don't about any of the big players, but um, I've been in conversation with uh, someone who franchises uh, three different BP locations, and we're going to implement Bitcoin in all three of his gas stations here in Wisconsin. Um, they're they're kind of spread all out, all, all over the state, so uh, there's three of them, and, and two of them are in the Fox Valley area, which is like Appleton, Oshkosh, and if you're familiar with the Midwest a little bit, it's um, maybe the third largest metro area in the state. And then one in Waukesha, which is a suburb of Milwaukee. So um, I know the members of uh, the meetup at Mil Bitcoin Milwaukee are really excited to be able to buy gas directly in Bitcoin, and and um, instead of going through the third-party uh, systems like you know the places that that offer gas cards uh, for Bitcoin and things like that that take a while to be mailed to you and and stuff. Um, but yeah, he's excited. He's been a Bitcoin user and um, saver, investor, if you will. Uh, and he wants to implement it for his his car washes and gas stations, but uh, yeah, I think the reason, the main reason I hooked him, or you know, in our discussions, it worked, is because he's having a harder and harder time um, buying bitcoins. Uh, you know, he's an Apple user, and so the Coinbase app went dead for him, and that was one of his easy ways. And he doesn't prefer um, Coinbase, and he goes through the trouble with local bitcoins sometimes, usually with me. But um, yeah, he. Uh, he wants to earn them. I think this is why a lot of small retailers will gravitate to accepting Bitcoin as payments and defy the um, the the often used rebuttal of you know the viability of Bitcoin as a currency because no there's not enough places to accept it. Merchants won't want to accept it because of the currency risk and all that. Well, I think they're going to really want to accept it because it's much easier to earn Bitcoins than it is to buy them on an exchange. In a lot of these people's opinions, in my opinion, so. Um, it's going to be an exciting year in 2014. The big players, you know, Derek, maybe 2015 is a little too early of an estimate. It might be another four years, I think, or more. Anthony Del Oreo. Yeah, I think the franchises, even for larger companies, the franchise owners perhaps might start accepting, like we've seen with Subway or like we've seen in some other places, where on mass or on the whole as a company, I don't think that they're going to make that statement and have everybody doing it. But I do think we're going to see franchises, whether it be from up here in Canada, we've got like Shell and Petro Canada, I guess, some um, different things up here. And I, and I do see franchise owners who do want to be forward thinking, are involved in Bitcoin, can do that on their own. Uh, but I do think it's going to be a couple years out at least where we're actually going to see on a whole, an entire company of, of those magnitude to start accepting Bitcoin. 
Will, that's really exciting news that you've got some gas stations that are going to accept Bitcoin. I've thought that gas stations are a really great match for Bitcoin because gas stations were one of the first places where I learned about the fees that were being charged to these companies when I use a credit card. Until I went to a gas station and they started charging me fees, I didn't even understand that they were getting charged by a third party every time people pay with this money that's supposedly easier, the credit cards. Exit question. What category of retailer would you like to see accept Bitcoin? Is there anything better than gas stations? Derek J? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anywhere where cash is the norm uh, for a business, is Bitcoin is going to be a better solution for them. And another one is uh, anything that requires an ID. So anytime a uh, business that uh, needs some sort of identification, like a gym membership or uh, maybe some club, uh, having a particular... Um, uh, yeah, being able to accept Bitcoin in those places would be ideal. Uh, the first couple of places that I think we'd see in 2014 will be laundromats, um, pe people using Bitcoin for concerts, using uh, ticketing services. Mm -hmm. um, you could use them for movies. Convenience stores would be huge because you don't have to bother with making change. Uh, you can just take your phone out of your wallet, scan, and go. Um, and uh, coffee shops, cl you know, places... Like clubs, it could even offer VIP discounts for paying in Bitcoin. Uh, you can have um, transferable tickets. It, these are all <laughs> these are all going to be developed over the next coming years, and uh, it's going to be exciting to see. But uh, concerts, laundromats, and convenience stores, I think, are the big big ones. Megan, I think the gas stations are great, but I'd like to see an alliance with um, the alternative energy businesses. I think there's a lot of interesting technology coming out in that sector, and I'd like to see Bitcoin become a part of that. I think there's a really strong, uh, I think there could be a very strong alliance there. And also, I think where you'll probably see them is in uh, kind of the music festival scene among some of the vendors, because they tend to be kind of... Uh, you know, into more alternative means of payment anyway. So I think it's something that they could add, you know, they're mostly a cash business. And like Derek would, you know, was saying, with these smaller cash-only businesses, I think you're really going to see it take off there. Will Pangman. Yeah, um, I like what Megan was saying about alternative energy businesses. You know, I'd like to see utilities companies of any kind, you know, alternative or conventional, if you will, uh, accepting Bitcoin. That, that would be my my comment, but I really liked the concept of ticketing with using Bitcoin. Um, this is a really cool way for a fundraiser to pre-sell tickets that can also then function as a donation simultaneously. Uh, you know, just it's also a great way to introduce people to to Bitcoin. You know, they can purchase a paper wallet that effectively is a ticket with fiat, and then use that ticket and the surplus, hopefully, on that ticket to purchase goods like at the music festival vendors and things like that. So that's a really exciting thing. I'm going to use that for a fundraiser we're going to throw here in Milwaukee um, at one of the new Bitcoin accepting businesses. Um, that's, that's kind of the concept. And, yeah, the ticketing things, I think uh, a lot of the hospitality or entertainment style um, businesses out there or, or business ventures, music festivals, um, you know, even nightclubs and, and just movie theaters or special events at theaters, you know, speakers and things like that, you're going to be able to draw a, an especially interesting buzz by implementing a Bitcoin ticketing feature. Anthony DeOrio. Well, I think a lot of them have already been listed, but I think the things uh, that people are using more frequently, convenience stores, coffee shops, where we can see Bitcoin logos in the windows, a lot of those little businesses and gas stations as well, where it's just... You know, I just want to start seeing the Bitcoin logo flooded everywhere, and then people start using it, people start recognizing it. And I just want to get the mass adoption up, and I think smaller little locations are great, um, and just ones that have high visibility in the cities. And we want to have uh, be using this for a conference that we're putting on in April in Toronto here. So we want to have people doing ticketing. We want to be able to see vendors, and, and we're doing it purely in Bitcoin, so we're not paying anything out to anybody that's not going to be offering Bitcoin in our, in our event for the services that we're going to provide there. So we'd like to see more venues being able to accept Bitcoin. Um, bars, everyone. We want to see it everywhere. And, and, and speaking of ticketing, I, they did say they were going to try to accept Bitcoin for Burning Man. So that yeah. would be a big deal if Burning Man did accept Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. 
let's see. Moving on to the next issue. Issue two. FinCEN. Miners are not money transmitters. A new ruling by the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network says that Bitcoin miners do not have to register as money transmitters. More and more Bitcoining is entering the mainstream. Does this clear the way for large-scale home mining adoption? Is it time to start building Bitcoin miners into refrigerators yet? I ask you, Megan Lords. Oh, well, I think this is definitely a positive thing, but um, I still really have this uh, sense that Bitcoin's going to be regulated. And if you do start having larger scale mining operations, they'll be regulated by different government agencies than FinCEN. So uh, it, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. I, it, it's something that um, I guess I don't have a super strong opinion on that right now, just that uh, I, I'm still apprehensive of uh, where, where the regulations are going to go with Bitcoin. Will Pangman. Um, yeah, why can't we put miners in refrigerators now? I don't see why not. Um, I don't see mining being something that hobbyists or you know just the average Joe can do in their home. Maybe for a couple of years, um, it's certainly grown into an industry of its own and the, you know it's very cost prohibitive to get involved in profitable mining these days. Um, which is fine. Uh, I think you know, as time goes on, and you know, the the ubiquity of mining will increase, and, and the difficulty will rise, and there will be some exit from some of those larger players, allowing some, you know, the difficulty will go back down, and allowing some, uh, you know, just uh, general appliances or or personal computers, or you know, these kinds of things to start mining again. Smaller rigs being more viable and stuff. Uh, that'll be several years down the road. Um, but uh, yeah, it, this is a great ruling. Uh, this is very favorable for Bitcoin. I have often think a lot of the bad news that most people perceive as bad is usually, you know, kind of a plus anyway for Bitcoin. But this is a plus that's definitely a plus. And um, you know, this I could see a ruling again, you know, a ruling in, in in opposition to this ruling being something that maybe squelches uh, Bitcoin adoption or you know just causes a hiccup that that miners then have to find a workaround to be able to continue to do what they really want to do um, with through some loopholes or whatever. So it's nice that they don't have to go through those hurdles and they can just keep their their growth trajectory on track if they have one instead of having to, you know, stop and double back and figure out some workarounds. So, yeah, it's a positive and I, I'm, I'm really interested to see how mining hardware is implemented in just about anything in our daily life you know there's lots of talk of that at conferences and it'll be really exciting to start to see that emerge you know, maybe a year from now or so um, the first mover there will be pretty interesting too so Anthony DeOrio well I haven't really been following too much of the, the regulations on mine I thought it was I don't know if it was previously announced that you couldn't that miners did have to register or was unclear in the states I know up in here we have no issues with that we consider Bitcoin not money, so we've had a lot of, uh, you know, it's, it, Canada's been excellent. It's actually come to the forefront, and people are seeing Canada as a, as a Bitcoin-friendly place that we're taking, you know, a weight back and see more, more of approach, and it's really been spurring mining pools are coming to Canada now. Uh, we have some really good electrical rates in, in Quebec that are really enticing big, large mining pools to, to set up themselves there. Um, and Canada has been, been very favorable for mining. I think this could be excellent for the states, but I don't know if it's really going to change too much. I think people are we're still continuing their mining. Um, it could open the door to, to larger projects, there, but I'm really not sure. Derek J. Yeah, I can't believe what Will's talking about. That's all nonsense. Uh, the this news is totally meaningless. The, what was the government going to say um, that all? miners have to register as money transmitters, they would have no arm for enforcement if that were their declaration. Everyone would just laugh and know that they have no understanding of what um, Bitcoin even is or, or how mining works. Yeah. And they would have a real problem on their hands by instantly converting a bunch of knowledgeable, powerful geeks into felons or, or criminals and then they would have that problem on their hands. So all these people saying, oh my gosh, the violence inherent in the system, I've suddenly woken up to all of your evil government, uh, well, that would be a problem for them. So no, this is a meaningless declaration. All it says is that um, they understand that anyone can be a miner, 
and they have no way to stop it. Um, that's kind of good news, but it's, it's not like miners were waiting for the government to tell them they're allowed to or not. Bitcoin Philadelphia has gotten some requests from businesses who are looking to start mining on a large scale, um, but that just might be because the timing is right. This is, might not be uh, relevant to the, the announcement. Um, that said, the person who discovers how to put miners in small appliances wins all the cake because that, that is a great idea uh, and I can't wait to see that happen. But uh, it, it probably won't be the mainstream source of, of mining. Exit question. In 2014, Bitcoin mining will be completely taken over by large-scale corporations? Yes or no, Megan Lords? I, I don't think so just yet. Um, I, I think you're still going to mostly sleep, see individuals um, in that field for a while. So. Will Pengman. Uh, it kind of already is that way, sort of, isn't it? I mean, I, I kind of like what, what Anthony said about certain jurisdictions having, you know, cheaper energy costs or things like that. The price of Bitcoin, too, you know, if, if that's in a proper proportion compared with the difficulty that the average person could be somewhat profitable, then you'll see more individuals entering that. So, you know, there's a lot of factors here. The difficulty, the the price of Bitcoin, you know, that goes up. Difficulty stays the same or, you know, doesn't increase too much. And then um, the the hardware can be more accessible. That's a big problem. I think that's kind of part of the part of the plan for some of these larger groups who are consolidating mining operations and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, it'll open up. It's it, it's uh, it's a matter of these factors kind of all finding their little equilibrium that makes it friendly for an individual. Right now, I don't think that's the case. It's... It's profitable only for the big boys. Anthony DeOrio. Yeah, I think this is going to be year where we're going to see big uh, corporations come out of nowhere, and I think they're going to dwarf what's actually been out there, anything that we've got right now. I think there's a lot of secret projects going on with um, advanced chip companies right now that are working with both corporations and banks, and I see that this is going to be the year where the banks are going to start, uh, and you're going to start seeing mining projects coming up from banks that are going to be 50, 100 times larger than what we've ever seen before. Derek J. Yeah, Bitcoin energy will be a lot like energy production. Large companies produce most of the energy we use, but some people use solar panels at home to produce some of the energy. Uh, Large-scale corporations will produce most of the Bitcoin we use, but some will be mined by small-scale users. The Bitcoin Group is sponsored by Alpha Lion Technologies. Alpha Lion Technologies, they don't make the altcoins. They make the altcoins of the future. Learn how to make your own altcoin at alphaliontechnologies.com. Issue 3. India Bitcoin. The Royal Bank of India announced this week that it has no plans to regulate Bitcoin. However, actions by India's enforcement division shut down several Bitcoin exchanges and seem to be interviewing the companies attempting to understand Bitcoin. As opposed to China's just say no policy, India seems to be seeking first to understand. Will India adopt Bitcoin? I ask you, will Pengman? India will adopt Bitcoin. Uh, you know, talking to some some guys who are over there um, that I've interfaced with through the Bitcoin Foundation's Education Committee, for example, it has a lot of attention. Not as much traction as maybe China or Russia even, but um, it's happening. The, you know, I guess I want to, I guess I want, I'm interested to hear what Derek would say, but, you know, my personal feeling on, on this whole Royal Bank of India not going to do anything and then their enforcement arm goes and shuts people down. This is just a sign of the soft tyranny that we're used to seeing. Uh, you know, it might be a little harder than soft tyranny, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of this double speak game that we always see with, these bureaucrats where, you know, out of one corner of their mouth, they're telling you um, uh, a message that will pacify you and lower your defenses, while on the other hand, out of the other side of their mouth, they're going to come and smack you. And so these thi Bitcoin won't be deterred by these things, but, uh, you know, it's upsetting. I don't like to see, see things like this happen to good businessmen like BTC China and Bobby Lee or, you know, um, some of the Bitcoin ventures in India being kind of suppressed. So uh, it's, we'll see more of that in the USA for sure. Um, it's kind of a brace yourself situation, and it's unfortunate. There, there are some encouraging signs. You know, there's a congressman who attended the New York City 
meetups, uh, New Year's Eve party, who apparently wants to get this, sponsor legislation to leave Bitcoin alone. And why you need a bill to do that, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, again, it's somewhat encouraging. You know, I, I like to keep a positive outlook on these things and, and um, you know, nod my head up and down and keep pressing on with some of my projects and encouraging and proselytizing others to do the same with theirs. Anthony DeOrio. I have no idea what India is going to do. It's going to be up to, I mean, I think these will be slowed down for some time with their ruling, but I really have no clue. It's going to be up to the regulators and how fast that they're going to, you know, if they're going to let these exchanges keep going. I think it's unclear right now, and I don't think I can provide a, a, a you know, an estimation of, of this, if it's going to get adopted in India. It will be, but who knows when. Derek J. Yeah, India, India will accept Bitcoin as soon and no sooner than a large Bitcoin company pays off the politicians. Because the people will be able to accept it whenever they're ready, but the politicians only talk one language. That's money. Megan Lords. Uh, as much as I would like to see India adopt Bitcoin, I'm not so sure that it will happen. Um, well, you know, like, like you said, they're kind of in the uh, information gathering uh, stages right now. They're still trying to understand that, and I think that's a good thing. And I think it may take them maybe a little bit longer than China or maybe some other countries to really crack down on it. Um, one thing I, I came across that was kind of interesting is uh, the Bank of India uh, basically said Dogecoin is a currency. <laughs> which I thought was weird. I mean, of, of all the you know other altcoins that are out there, and then you know the bitcoins there too. Uh, that they pick Dogecoin, so that's kind of interesting. I mean, maybe they're kind of uh, friendly to crypt to the idea of cryptocurrency in a way, but uh, I think once they realize the threat it poses, uh, they might change their mind on that. I do agree that. It seems like the Royal Bank of India has no real ability to regulate Bitcoin if they wanted to regulate Bitcoin. So it's a bit of a non-announcement from the RBI, as they keep calling it in every article. And I keep thinking, what does India have to do with runs batted in? <laughs> Exit question. India, Russia, or China, which country will have the biggest Bitcoin fever in 2014? Will Pengman. Um, I'm going to go off the... It's, China's kind of the easy answer there, but I really think it'll be Argentina. Anthony DeOrio. I'm going to roll the dice, but I'm also going to stick with the three options. So I'm going to say uh, Russia. Derek J. China. Megan Lords. I'm going to go with India. The answer is India. Issue four. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. Issue four, Bitcoin, promote thyself. Bitcoin is not a company. Bitcoin is not having an IPO. If you want to spread the word about Bitcoin, you're going to have to do it yourself. This week, an impressive project by Arise Bitcoin put up more than 40 billboards in San Francisco advertising the fledgling cryptocurrency. Meanwhile, in Canada, Bitcoin Decentral opened in Toronto as a shared work area complete with a Bitcoin ATM. Which would you rather have in your city, a Bitcoin billboard or a Bitcoin ATM? I ask you, Anthony DeOrio. Well, I'll stick with, with, with the, uh, the, the billboard that I have outside of Bitcoin Decentral, which is a nice big sign which acts like a billboard for the ATM that we have inside. So I'm going to go with that. Derek J. An ATM, man. Come on. I want to use this stuff. I, I, I'm not interested in some billboard. Uh, that, that might be useful and helpful in spreading the word, but um, a Bitcoin ATM is, is uh, part of using the technology, and so that's, that's more interesting to me. Megan Lords. ATM, hands down, definitely. I, I would much rather have access to a Bitcoin ATM. And, uh, you know, the word gets out about Bitcoin from people going to businesses and just talking with their friends about it. I mean, for New Year's Eve, I had a great, you know, conversation with some of my friends. I went over to New Orleans and got to talk with them, and they're telling people. So I think word is already spreading. And like Derek said, I want to be able to use Bitcoin. Will Pangman. Definitely ATM hands down. Um, working tooth and nail with the members of both Bitcoin Milwaukee to get one here. And uh, well, hopefully that'll be an announcement we can make sometime in 2014. But about the billboard thing, I mean, I really hate to criticize 
uh, a Bitcoin promotional effort at all, but I got to think the money for that could have been better spent. I mean, three, four months ago, I would, everywhere I go, ask people if they heard about Bitcoin. If I'm checking out at any place for, you know, spending money anywhere, I'm asking the, the clerk um, all the time just to, I'm always interested in, in how far this is spread. And three months ago, four months ago, maybe three out of five people didn't know what Bitcoin was. I seriously have had, I don't know, the last 25 people I've asked this question to say yes and then carry a conversation on with them. People know what this is. I don't think we need billboards anymore. That money ha could have been much better spent. They could have bought how many ATMs with, those, with the money spent on those billboards? I don't know, 40 billboards in one city seems like oversaturation in a place where Bitcoin awareness is, you know, almost ubiquitous around Silicon Valley. So, yeah, I, I'm, I don't want to be too critical of that effort because I... I like to see outreach like that, but um, oh man, I wish they would have spent some, consulted some people more. Or, I don't know. Just there's a better way to spend all that money than 40 billboards in one dang city. Also, the the message on the billboard could be a little better. It has a large QR code. It has the website Arise Bitcoin, which is kind of an inside joke for Bitcoiners. Not really great for everyone else. I mean. Even just a link to We Use Coins might have made more sense. I don't know. And then there was a similar project in Los Angeles where the Bitcoins actually just say, send Bitcoin to this QR code. And it seems as though the whole campaign is just attempting to raise money for Bitcoin awareness, as if they're just going to replicate the uh, Hi Mom Send Bitcoin sign from ESPN, which raised $24,000. Uh, that idea has gotten into people's heads, I think, if you put a QR code out somewhere they're going to send you $24,000. Anthony, your thoughts? Well... Or sorry, Megan? Well, yeah, I mean, he got the $24,000 after he said he would donate a huge chunk of it to Sean's outpost. So, I mean, yeah, it's kind of... I mean, it, yeah, some people may be trying to replicate that, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of <laughs> Me? What do I think? That's It's stupid. <laughs> I don't have much more to say about that. <laughs> I have something I want to say about that. It's that's a one-time phenomenon, done and gone. Uh, awesome, awesome thing to get Bitcoin out there. I mean, you know, sports nerds really are clueless about Bitcoin and tech trends unless it involves athletic, you know, professional athletics or college athletics. So to do that was really, really cool. The fact that he got twenty-four thousand. I thought he got the money before he decided to donate to Sean's outpost. I could be wrong on that, but that was an impressive sum in less than 24 hours to get, you know, of course that broadcast is everywhere, but, uh, you know, I've had friends who have suggested, oh, they're going to go to, like, you know, the Creighton-Marquette basketball game or the no-name versus no-name, you know, football game, you know, the Division three college championship or something and do the same thing, and they didn't probably get a single thing because I didn't hear back from them on their progress. So that the idea is over. You know, people, yeah, that train is gone. Exit question. What's the best promotional tool for Bitcoin? Large-scale corporate adoption or small-scale word of mouth? Anthony DeOrio. I don't know. I, I think they're both great. I think if we can get some large uh, corporate people on board, I think that's an excellent thing. And then the small-scale word of mouth, meetup groups, um, grassroots stuff with Bitcoin I think is excellent as well. So I don't think I'd want to put them in one or the other or say which one is better than the other. Derek J. Definitely small-scale word of mouth. It is always the the real engine behind everything. And that's what we've seen so far has been the small-scale word of mouth. It's not like um, Bitcoin came into its own once WordPress accepted it and then we can just wash our hands and we're done. It's, it's going to be a long process of everywhere you go, every time you spend paper dollars, you're going to have to ask the, the waitress, ask wherever you are, hey, do you accept Bitcoin? You'll probably get a no if it's their first time being asked. But the tenth time, they're going to start to look into that. And uh, so small-scale word of mouth is, is absolutely the way to go. Megan Lords. 
Well, I think they both uh, play an important role in spreading the word about Bitcoin. I think uh, in places where there is a lot of corporate influence or a lot of corporations in general, I think it would be great to see uh, wider scale adoption by corporations. But in smaller rural areas where you have smaller locally owned stores, then you know I think the smaller scale word of mouth is going to be better. So. Yeah, they both play play a role, and I don't know that I could rank one above the other. Will Pangman. I'm inclined to agree with Derek wholeheartedly on this. I mean, you know, as involved in the meetup culture as I am, Derek is, Anthony is, um, you know, we've seen the the incredible, bountiful fruits that emerge from, from that word-of-mouth activity and community outreach. So, you know... But there's no denying the effect that Baidu accepting Bitcoin for one little subset of their business did for popularizing Bitcoin, not only in China, but around the world. So there are times when some of these big players can make a splash and maybe give some legitimacy to Bitcoin um, you know, for the mainstream public who's been doubting it for a while and been aware but doubting. Um, but to be honest... I mean, I can get any doubter to download a blockchain wallet and give them a dollar's worth of Bitcoin, and that takes two minutes. And I can do that a dozen or two dozen times a day, and every day. And I have... You can do it you faster know, with Coinapult. <laughs> Coinapult, all these solutions. There's, here's the thing. There are infrastructure problems. There's lacking infrastructure, and there's user interface clumsiness, and, and just it's, it's, it's very new and it's difficult for the average person to use at this point still. But it's not that difficult if you have a friendly hand to help you. And so that's where word of mouth trumps anything else. If you have someone who can walk you through it, take you down the path one time, then have you receive some Bitcoin, have them send some Bitcoin, that one transaction will make it seem so easy. If they touch it and then send it one time, they'll have no problem doing that a second time, and that's why word of mouth goes a long way. It's not just talking about Bitcoin though, giving them a wallet, giving them a little piece of some Satoshis, and then helping them spend some Satoshis, you know, share it with the next person that you're going to sign up with a wallet. And this happens in mass at meetups around the world. I know that. It happens with me on the street. Word of mouth, definitely by far, even though there are some big splashes that some of these announcements can make from big, co big money, big corporations. Excellent. Moving on to predictions. This is the part of the show where I ask you to predict the future. Are you ready? Derek J. No, I'm not ready. I didn't make <laughs> it. Megan Lord. I'm so not ready for the predictions part. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me see if I can come up with something. Will Pingman. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my prediction. We're going to see a big price drop here between now and the beginning of February one big drop for a day or two and it's you know people can speculate on the causes for this but um, from what I'm what I'm seeing and hearing there still isn't a lot of faith and I think the traders the traders influence the price a great deal that you know there's a hundred thousand bitcoins moved a week or two ago and it didn't affect the price one bit because that was done off exchange right but if you do that on an exchange we're gonna see a wild day or two right so there is going to be some action on these exchanges in, in the downward direction before we see a bounce back, and we're definitely going to end the year on a high note, 5x or 10x uh, from where we are today, um, which, of course, I think we're all looking forward to. Uh, but that's my prediction. Within 30, 30 days from now, we're going to see you know, a, another 20% to 40% drop in the price before it bounces back. I have one, I have one, I, I have one now. The the there yeah, was more your turn. volatility in twenty fourteen than there was in twenty thirteen. Like ten times more volatility. Anthony DeOrio. I think we're gonna see with with you know with what's going on in China, what's going on in India and the price is still staying really strong. I just see it's going up. I see in the next thirty days we're back up to like the twelve hundred dollar mark. I see it going up. Um I'll agree with Will maybe five times by the end of the year. Megan Lords. I got nothing still. <laughs> <laughs> Smart analysts are pre predicting that 2014. Even more are predicting that Bitcoin's price has no top, and we may see $10,000 a coin by the end of the year. While these figures may seem extremely bullish, they may turn out to be right. 
Investing in Bitcoin is investing in the payment network of the future. It is much more than a currency. 2014 is the year that the world will truly wake up to the new internet of money. Bitcoin will reach $10,000 a coin by the end of this year. We're out of time. Until next time, bye-bye.